Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Well, they just keep coming here at assholeconsulting.com, where I, the world's only professional asshole, swear to God, the way not millennials, the way academians are going, 20 years, I, hey, you could get a doctorate being an asshole. Come to the Asshole Institute of Assholes. <sighs> Commercials would be ran during daytime TV. Hey, are you an asshole? Are you a real prick? Are you a cock and everybody hates you? Come to the Asshole Institute. Maybe I should do that. I'll set up an Asshole Institute, charge kids money, $300 a credit, sell them a book for $800 that I write, write a new edition every year so that they can't use the old one because I'm a fucking academic prick. Anyway, um, I'm a 22-year-old guy who graduated with a degree in engineering and got a job in Florida. I have about $10,000 in savings, no debt, and expect to net about $2,000 per month after taxes and all major expenses like food, rent, and etc. I understand my situation is pretty good, but three things are bothering me nonetheless. One, social. It was easy in school to meet people and make friends, but now it's not. I'm pretty personable and easygoing. However, there aren't really that many young people in their 20s here at work or in the town. Also, I came from another state, so I know zero people here. In my experience, the bar and club scenes aren't really useful for making actual friends. So how do I go about finding people who could be friends who are within five years of my age? Okay, this is hard. Uh, it's just it, This is a price that every real man and woman has to pay if you're going to go out and you're going to achieve. If, you're, if, if you want to stay at home, you stay in the same town that you always did. Like when I went back... I went to a high school called Germantown, Wisconsin. I went back to this bar one time, you know, in town, and I was like amazed how many people were there and never left. It's like, fuck. Uh, so if you want to live life, one of the things is you're going to have to be lonely at some times as you're finding out. Now, it depends on the town and the environment you're in. For example, I always recommend ballroom dancing, not necessarily to meet women, although sometimes that can work but more for a social outlet, and, and it's, it's always good to have the skill of, of being able to ballroom dance. But it varies from town to town. One town can have a great swing scene. Another town can have a vibrant salsa scene. And then you go the next town over, and it's nothing but old farts, or it's Christian singles groups, or whatever. It de 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 depends on the cycle. Uh, the ballroom dance has a life cycle. You can look it up. But it, it, it really depends. And you can have a town that's full of young people having a grand old time. Uh, and then it's just uh, retiresmentsville, uh, you know, God's waiting room, especially if you're down in Florida. So what you have to do is it, I'm not a big believer in going out and finding friends because it's too similar. Like, I got to go find a girl on a date and you ruin it. You just got to sit, be yourself. You'll naturally find people. Uh, who are friends on your own. Uh, but there are other things you can do to accelerate that, and that is just do what you want to do, your hobbies, your interests. Um, you know, I've made some friends down in Florida by going to cigar lounges. They're very popular. Usually it meets some interesting people there, not that you want to smoke cigars. But the larger point is doing things that you want to do, you will find them. Now, specific moves that you can take, there's meetup. I think that's and boy, that's that's a, that's another hit and miss because you go to Meetup and it's like, oh, we got 3,000 members in this group. And if you know what Meetup is, it's basically, you know, a volleyball Meetup or a chess club Meetup and a poker Meetup. So there's all these people that j join the Meetup. But when you look at how many people actually attend these events, it's like two, three. And you're kind of like, well, that was that was a waste. So I would do meetups. I'd maybe get into sports like running clubs, volleyball, kickball, something. Something just to, to, to get out there. Um, but it may be that the environment you're in is not, it's not conducive. There's just not enough people your age. Um, it, it can suck. It can really suck. I know a, a buddy of mine who is also down in Florida. He has a handful of friends, but not a lot because it is older. It's a, it's a lot older. You may have to go to another town. You may have to drive to a town where there are younger people or people your age. I don't know what town or maybe you got too many young people. I don't know if you're in a college town or what. Um, but yeah, you may have to go to the next town over and and that's just uh, what it is for social so but just keep plugging away uh just you know understand if you can't find a lot of friends it, it may not be you it could definitely be your environment to the job the skills i'm inquiring at this job are not translatable to many other jobs they are rather specific and i don't want to get 
uh, cornered up doing the same thing for years. I think most engineering is that though. Also, there's not a whole lot of room for growth and salary as well, just continuing to do the same thing. However, there's definitely job security for new employees. I'd rather not stay here for much longer. I'm trying to figure out what to do next. I know of people who use their engineering degrees to get into big four consulting firms in financial or technology analyst roles and make 70, 80,000. Is this a good idea to try to get out of real engineering? Is this a good idea to try to get out of real engineering jobs? How can I leverage what I have to get into tracks that eventually pay a lot more and have more impact since I am ultimately more interested in business. All right, dude, you're 22. You just fucking graduated. You gotta get some years under your belt. You're not. You're not. Don't. You got a fucking job, okay? You know how many 22 year olds have jobs that pay enough? Stay there. You may be cornered, okay? That that doesn't mean you can't teach yourself other things or take on other projects. Stay there. Build up some money. Get like three to four years on your resume. Unless they start giving you shit or they start pigeonholing you into like really shitty work. All right, but you, you can't just, why well, oh, six months, this sucks. And, oh, huh? hey, big four consulting company, hire me. I got six months experience over here, and I haven't even grown pubes yet on my face because I'm only 22. You, you're not going to get into that. What I recommend, be an engineer. Um, if you're really worried about it, you know, and you're like, oh, this isn't really where it's going, start asking for other work or say, hey, boss, you know, I'd like to go a different route. Or start applying for other jobs, but you know, build up your money, pay off whatever student loans you have. You know, pay pay cash for cars to have reliable transportation. Get some key things financially and your personal finances set and established before you say, "I'm going to jump ship and go over here." Um, then, how to get into big time consulting? I, the best combination I've found with the engineers is you get your engineering degree, and then a lot of them will go and get their MBA. I'm still. I, I would insist that your employer pay for an MBA. I would look into accounting. I would get some accounting skills. That's what I would do. If you could get a CPA on top of it, like you go, you already have your degree. You may have to take some master's classes in accounting, learn some stuff on the side, but you get a couple master's classes in accounting after you teach yourself some basic accounting. Then you test and you sit for the CPA. That, that would be a very impressive resume. You're an engineer, you have all this engineering experience, and then you also got your CPA. Now, it won't be an easy track to go down, but if you can do engineering, you could certainly do your CPA. Uh, but it, it's hard, it's hard. Don't, um, don't think, oh, I can just get my CPA. It's like getting your driver's license. It is not like getting your driver's license. I think most people fail the first couple times they take it. Uh, but that will get you into big four. Well, I can't guarantee it will get you into big four consulting, but it'll increase your chances definitely. So, get that there. Uh, three, spare time and money. It's not a bad situation, but I have spare cash that I have no idea what to do with and I'm willing to put in the time and effort to put it to work. I want to make use of it in entrepreneurship, but really don't know a good way to get started. I'm willing to work extremely hard, though I though I don't. I know you don't give financial advice, but savings account and most other safe investments have no interest yield these days. And stocks are volatile. My decision has been to avoid these and just hold cash in a checking account. Yeah, that's a that's a problem. Um, I mean, I did a thing why you should invest in, or why Davis Arena is better than your 401k. Look that article up. Uh, you can maybe do micro investments. Um, what is it? Where you can do these micro lendings, um, not payday. What was it? You, you lend money online. I forget the name of them, but look, look, you got, you might get a higher interest rate there. Uh, what else? Um, but yeah, you could maybe look at high dividend yield stocks, but even that's no guarantee because the stock prices could go down. What I would do, if you have any debt, pay it off. If you don't have any debt, then then start looking at things like building up your silver reserves, get a gun, um, uh, what's it called, LifeLock, you know, these insurance things that, that will prevent against bad things. Do you, do you have enough silver? I mean, I recommend 200 pieces of silver. Do you have 200 pieces of silver? Because if you don't, there's, some, there's a place that some of your money could go, uh, but it will not solve your long-term stuff. The only problem is if you want to do entrepreneurial stuff, you got to figure it out what you want to do entrepreneurship-wise. And there's nothing wrong with having your money in cash. You know, Maybe, maybe get an inflation-adjusted bond if you're worried about um, losing money to interest or go find a long-term CD, you know, something to hedge against inflation. Uh, but yeah, you want to keep that liquid and you, wanna, you don't want to risk it in the stock market if you intend on using it later. Otherwise, if all of a sudden you come up with a lot of money, you know, I, I, I would never get a house again, but I wouldn't mind getting a small condo, a very small condo, or a micro house. 
because then you never have to worry about housing again. Like that one major thing is taken care of. So if you got, you know, you see yourself a cheap condo or something, or you, you see a plot of land, you want to put a little micro house on it. Uh, not a bad idea if you got like 30, 40 grand. Not, not a bad idea at all. Um, but you know, these are, that's just saving you rent down the road. That's, you know, it's, it's not a huge investment, so. Uh, conclusion, I think I did everything right as far as school and finances so far, but I'm trying to project long-term, make sure I'm not pissing away, not taking advantage of better opportunities to make more money, more friends, have a better experience, enjoy life more. Thanks, let me know if I can provide for you. Yeah, you're, you're doing good, but look, nothing is perfect in life. You, I don't think there's been one point in my life where everything's been awesome. There just hasn't. There's always been at least one major thing wrong or at least one problem that I would like to solve, but it is beyond my ability to solve it because it's outside of my control. And it could be, it seems like the only problem you have is the lack of social opportunities, uh, which may mean you have to road trip it to, you know, uh, another town, next town over on the weekends or whatever. But yeah, go out there, bang on some doors, go join some clubs. I know it's mechanical and almost rehearsed and um, kind of feels fake, but that's, that's what you got to do. So anyway, best of luck. Toodles.